Hey guys, how's it going today? So today I was going to do a quick video. Uh, I'm going to try to keep pretty basic on what an indice is or an index or specifically, you know, what is the market? Um, so I'm going to give you a definition that I think is just the easiest to understand. The market or an indice is uh, essentially a representation of how the stock market is doing as a whole. So quite often you'll hear in the United States, the Dow Jones or the S&P 500. So these are composites, meaning they're composed of many stocks and they've been putting, they've been put together by different rating agencies in an effort to just see how the market is doing as a whole. And what's kind of interesting about um, these different indices um, is that some are better than others and some are more representative uh, than others. So I'm going to quickly go through the most prevalent ones um, in the United States, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, and the S&P 500. And then I'm also going to briefly talk about the TSX in Canada. So this is the Dow right here. We have 10 years here. So it's a price weighted uh, index of 30 significant stocks traded on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. So sometimes, sometimes people get that confused too, the New York Stock Exchange, NYSE. That's just the exchange where the traders are trading the shares um, that are actually in this composite. Same with the NASDAQ. So if you're a little bit uh, con confused with that, go back to my video on what is a stock. Um, and I explain that a bit. So this is only 30 companies. And I just quickly led, put it here in a... Uh, Excel spreadsheet so you can say what I see what I mean here um, these are actually companies that are in it and then the approximate price so when it when I say it's a price weighted index we have Apple that's 171 Intel that's approximately 44 blah 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 they're simply summed and then they're divided by an index divisor now I'm not going to get into this too much but the purpose of this is just to ensure that when Apple splits uh, like I spoke about in my last video and stuff like that, that it doesn't have a significant impact in the price of the Dow. And obviously this is not the price of the Dow right now. This is just a, uh, uh, an example here. Um, so you can see how it's not really representative and how Apple has a pretty, pretty big, uh, uh, control over the, the price of the Dow. But I mean, this is just a small example. And one of the bigger issues with the Dow here, is that a one dollar change in a very small price here will actually have a greater effect than a one dollar change on like say we had like a ten dollar uh, stock here even though like the percentage change of the larger company uh, uh, might be more significant than the smaller company i won't go into that too much but um the the main thing to take away from this is that it's a price weighted index meaning the price of the company uh kind of determines what the uh, index is going to be as a whole, all of them. So this is why I spoke about in my last video why Apple actually split, because uh, they might not have been allowed to be in here and their price might have been significant, not very higher. So these are the components of the Dow. Like I said, there's 30 of them. You can look them up. And that's basically when you see the, the Dow quoted uh, in the news, it's this, these companies price weighted by the divisor. And it gives you an idea how the market's doing. In my opinion, it really doesn't because it's only 30 companies, right? A much better, uh, much better example is uh, the S&P 500, right? So this measures the value of 500 of the largest co corporations uh, in, in the United States. And again, this is on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. And this represents about 80% of the U.S. stock market. So it's a pretty good indicator. Um, and aside from it being a pretty good indicator, it's more representative. So I try to make this really simple for you guys here. This is a value-weighted index. It's not like a price-weighted index. So for example, here we have uh, Apple 171. We have approximately 5 billion shares outstanding. So this is their market cap. And Intel, blah, blah, blah. And these are all summed, and this gives the S&P 500 total uh, market capitalization. As you can see here, uh, 
say Apple has 63% weight in this example, that's 877 billion divided by the total, 63%. I'm gonna make a note here that this is also adjusted. The, these numbers are adjusted because it's based on uh, what Apple started with, uh, my, uh, minus what it's at now, divided by an index divider, but it's not really relevant because once you do those calculations, this is how the weighting works. So this is why I'm showing you this and I don't want to get into too much detail because it's really not important. It's just important to understand how the two differ, right? And how they actually uh, make, how, they, how these companies actually make up the indices. So here's an example to show you why it's better. Um, so here I have 2%. So this is a 2% increase in Apple, 171 to 174. And Western Digital, 79 to 80. That's a 2% increase as well. So if you change 171 to 174, if you just watch that bottom total, it goes from about uh, 1.4 billion. So say it's about 15, 1.4 trillion rather, $15 billion increase, right? $15 billion. Now, if you take this one to approximately 80, it's significantly less. There's, there's 15, maybe 14 something billion uh, less that the market goes up uh, as a whole. But that makes sense, guys, right? So this is only 2% weight, whereas this is 63% weight. And you might think to yourself, well, that's kind of similar to the Dow, but the Dow is just based on price. This is based on actual value. So it's kind of a better indicator of how much wealth is being created because there's 5 billion shares outstanding and they're this price. So that's actually in people's pockets and funds, wherever those shares are held, right? So just to say that the price increases in this and say it doesn't have very many shares outstanding or whatever, it's not really a good indicator in the Dow because it's just based upon the price, right? Whereas this is showing the wealth created. So when we saw that 2% increase in Apple, we saw the, the, the index as a whole increase significantly. And that makes sense. It's intuitive because more wealth is being created, right? So this is why this is a much better indication um, of value being created in the market because it's based on the weight of these, right? So I hope that makes sense. Um, but that's the main takeaway from those two is why they're different. Um, and then again, there's 500 companies, so it's much more representative as well. Um, and the last one I'm going to quickly go over here is the TSX. This is in Canada. Um, I'll briefly go over this one. It's obviously uh, on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Uh, it is uh, roughly 70% of the Toronto Stock Exchange, so it's pretty representative. And this one's based on uh, float-adjusted market capitalization which basically means in this method, the market cap is determined uh, by share price and the amount of shares outstanding. And it's very kind of similar to the S&P 500. So it's a better um, representation of the market in Canada, in my opinion. So that was just a quick video on what an index is, uh, what the market is as a whole when people talk about the market. Uh, I hope it made sense. I hope I didn't get too complicated because it's not really important uh, in my opinion, to get way too complicated unless you're going to be calculating the Dow or calculating the S&P 500. So I hope you guys found that useful and you have a great day and I will see you in the next one.